Very warm greetings to one and all. Welcome to tonight's prayer meeting. Now let us turn our Bibles, turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Tonight, we move to a new characteristic of the end times. We studied about people in the end times will be blasphemous. Tonight, we will study about this characteristic of being disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. I think parents must be very excited for this particular lesson. But remember, parents, you are also a child to someone. All right, so it is not simply about children being obedient. We'll see why. Let us turn to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Let's read verses 18. 18 to 21. 18 to 21. Reading. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of his city, and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This is our son, this our son is stubborn and rebellious, he will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So shalt thou put away, put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us all turn to God in prayer. Eternal God, our gracious, loving, heavenly Father. We thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for a wonderful time of church camp, of learning your word and of fellowshipping one with another. We thank you for bringing us back safely to church and for the return of the sweet hour of prayer in thy house of prayer. But before we seek thee in prayer, Lord, may thou be merciful to speak to our hearts. Lord, teach us from your holy word regarding the characteristics of the perilous end times, that thy church may avoid these characteristics and, Lord, may not fail you as individuals, as your people. And Father, we do plead once again for the fresh cleansing, washing in the blood of our Saviour. For we acknowledge we have much sin, so Lord, many we are not even aware of. Be merciful to forgive and show us our sins that we may repent and bear the fruits of repentance. And Lord, now we pray that you remove all wandering thoughts, help us not only to listen, but help us, Lord, to understand, and with understanding have the convictions to obey as your children. This we ask and we pray, for thy name's sake, for thy kingdom's sake, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Bible talks about end times, perilous behaviours. And I keep reminding ourselves, our memory verse from 2 Timothy chapter 3 is not addressed to unbelievers. These are specific addresses to Christians in the church. These are behaviours that God says are to be avoided by the Christian in the church. Now turn to Romans chapter 1 verse 30. Keep a tab on Deuteronomy chapter 21, please. Keep a bookmark there. Romans chapter 1, verse 30. Romans chapter 1, verse 30. Now, Romans chapter 1, verse 30 describes unbelievers. All right? It describes unbelievers. Romans chapter 1, 30 says, Unbelievers behave this way. They are backbiters. Now, remember blasphemers? When we studied blasphemers, one of the meaning of blaspheming, some blaspheming is to slander someone, all right? To slander someone. When you blaspheme God, means you say, well, God is not true. 
What God says is false. So you blaspheme God. And when it comes to human, you blaspheme by slandering. So black backbiters. You see, unbelievers' characteristic, our previous life, we carried into our current believer's life. So blas- backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud. Right? We studied about proud. We studied about boasters. Now, aren't proud and boasters in the list of warnings against Christian in the church? Yes. Unbelievers, inventors of our evil things. And here... What is singled out about unbelievers is also they are disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. Now, this is a sinful behavior that carries on from our unsaved days. So, children, think about this. So, young ones, listen. Don't you think it's unusual that in the list of things that God says the Christian should avoid in the last days and be very careful and they will, they will plague us, they will influence us to become like that. So strong the influence it will be that we will carry it on and carry it into the church. But think about this. God warned about lovers of self. God warned about boasters. right? God warned about blasphemers. Now, these are very personal sins. Now, having dealt with personal sins, you would think, now, the next one, if you remember your memory verse, what's, what's after disobedient to, uh, to parents? Phoebe, what's after disobedient to parents? What's the next one? Un, unthankful. And after unthankful? Unholy. Very good. Now, you would think that unholy, unholy would be higher in the list of things that God says, Christians, make sure that you do not have this as you live the Christian walk. You would think that unholy would be, after dealing with pride and self, it would be unholy, right? But interestingly, God warns about this characteristic of being disobedient to children. It's higher than unholy in its priority of warning. Now, some would say, well, actually... I'm disobedient at home. What has it to do with church? Why must Paul want Timothy that as a child, I must be obedient to parents, right? Some parents may even feel, how I bring up my child? How would I teach my child? It's, not, it's none of the church's business. Some parents feel that today. They say, how, how I teach my child, what I do my child, whether I discipline my child or not, it's none of the church's business. But God, in His wisdom in the list of priority puts disobedient to children a uh, disobedient to parents ahead of unholiness in his warning to the church so young ones take this very seriously because today in the perilous times being disobedient to parent is so common but parents like i said in the beginning Don't take this as, yeah, my child, my child, and keep looking at your child. You must realize that you are also someone's child, right? How are you when you come to relating with your parents at home? Hmm? Sometimes I think even, sometimes I think the younger children are actually more obedient to parents than the adults, Younger children, they still will listen, obey. They are still fearful. But as we grow older, parents, this is also a warning to you. Are you disobedient to your parent? As we grow older, we feel that we know better. We feel that we have all the experiences. We get impatient with our parents. I still see Christians, the way they talk to their elderly father, mother, in very rude, impatient ways. Remember the, the illustration that um, Reverend Quack gave at the camp? So impatient when helping the parents with some computer work and so on, right? Very often, because we are adult, we are, we are ready to scold our parents. Scold our parents. Children, even the young ones, they, they are not at the age where they dare to scold their parents. But very often you see, even in shopping centres, adults, very dishonouring towards their parents and scolding them in public, impatient with them. 
So don't just think of your children. Now, but back to this point, why is it so high in the list? Why? Because, young ones, I don't want you to just take this series and adult as well as, yeah, there goes again, I must obey my parents, do this, do that, do this, do that, without understanding why God would include this in the church warning to you, adults and children alike. Why must it be there? Now, we read the word, uh, we, we, we memorized the word disobedient to parent. What is the meaning of disobedient? Now, the word means cannot be persuaded. You won't listen, all right? You already made up your mind. I, I'm not going to be persuaded. I've already decided. Can't be persuaded. Now, it means you won't comply. I don't really care if it's right or wrong. The point is, I'm not going to do what you say. You won't comply. That is what it means. Non-compliant. It means stubborn. Stubborn. Meaning to say, you may know that it is right for you to listen, but you are just stubborn. So adults, before we look at children and say, you're so stubborn, I think very often, the older we get, the more stubborn we are in our ways, especially for elderly. And willfully, willfully disobedient to authority. That is what it means. I think that summarizes it best. Willful disobedience to authority. So disobedience involves an authority in it. Why are you disobedient to? An authority. So whenever we think of this word disobedient to parent or disobedience, we must think it's a willful, stubborn refusal to be persuaded to comply to authority. All right? In the end times, God says, we live in perilous times, and I've said this many times. The reason why it is perilous is because of these behaviors of men. So God says, we live in perilous times, right? Men will be. These behaviors is what makes the end times perilous. Disobedience is one of them. Disobedience to parents is one of them. Now let us look at why, all right? both for young and for adult. So young ones, you sit there and say, ah, for the next couple of weeks, it's going to be just about me. And I don't want to come to prayer meeting. But I believe and I hope that when you understand why, you will think differently. You will say, I want to be an obedient child. Now turn to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy 21. Now, in verses 18 and 21, this is, well, probably a very well-known passage to many already. Talking about Israel, Israel's um, laws against disobedient children, right? Now, understand what it is first. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, all right, so it's basically the definition of disobedient to parent. We, we say the word stubborn. But this word rebellion is that stubbornness, all right? Rebellion. Rebel against authority. Authority says this, you say, just because you're authority, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. That's rebellion. Rebellion. Then, Further, is, it describes this law, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother. Here we go again. Voice, obey, voice, voice is the voice of authority, right? The voice. Instructions given, commands given, right? Prohibitions given. As well as um, instructions to do something is given. So the voice of his father and mother. Now, but here it says they have chastened him and he will not hearken. Right? The definition again. All right? Willful, willful, non-compliant. I won't be persuaded. Will not hearken. Will not listen. 
Children, are you like that at home? But it's after dealing and dealing and dealing with the child, chastening, given warning, and even after warning, even punishment, but still will not respond. Now, notice that what they were asked ask to do is to take hold of the child and bring the child to the elders of his city. So parents, you must know that where God is concerned, your child's behaviour is not just your family's, um, your family's preference. It's your family matter. Please don't be a busybody. They were told to bring the child to their elders. Today, we have church. We have church. It's the same. We learn this in the husband's fellowship. Yes, if it's refusal, 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 then involve the church elders. Counselling. Warning, church discipline. Now, but verse 20. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, means they have accountability. Accountability to the church. They have accountability to the elders of the city. The elders of the city, they rule the city. So there is an accountability. Now, children, it means this also. You have accountability. It's not, I don't want to listen to daddy and mommy. It's none of the church business. Now, this is our, this is our stubborn and rebellious. This son, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. So the repetition of disobedience to parent, he is a glutton and a drunkard. So before you think that this is a very stubborn young kid, this is a grown-up man. All right? Grown-up. Someone who is a glutton and a drunkard. Now, when this has reached this point of family dealing with it and the child won't repent, won't listen and continues to be disobedient to parent instruction, the elders of the city, they will listen to the case, all right? So this is, um, this is not straight away. They were stoned. The reason why you bring to the elders of city, they will listen to the case. All right? That is why they need to explain this our son is stubborn and rebellious. They don't just say, this our son didn't explain he's a glutton drunkard and we've done all these things. Please stone him to death. No. They bring him to the elders for counselling, for discipline, for reprimand, for chastisement. Right? Now, if this man still would not repent, would not obey, then all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. People will come out and stone this unrepentant, disobedient child, son to death. So it's death. Now, disobedient to parents, repeated rebelliousness is something that warrants death in God's eyes. So young ones, know that this sin of disobedient to parents is very serious in God's eye. Don't just think, all my friends are like that. They speak to their parents like that. Yes, they deserve death in God's eyes. It's a very serious sin. It's a punishment of hell. Don't think that it is a light thing. Now, but I said in the beginning, we need to learn why. Children, why? Why? Parents, you, the way you behave towards your elderly parents, why? What? Is it so? Why is it so serious? God puts this before holiness. God puts this as a sin that deserves death. Why? The answer is found in verse 21. Verse 21. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. Number one. Number two. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Two reasons. Put away evil from among you. 
so that not just city, not just this city, but all Israel, from north to south, east to west, they will hear about this incident. For what? To say, oh, that family's child is so bad, you know. That is what we, that is what we love to hear. No, to hear so that they will fear. They will fear. Put away evil and fear. So why does God put this as a serious thing and say, church, please warn. Now let me try and illustrate this. Because there's, I feel that there's no use. No use, just... No use just telling you, obey, and then you go home, oh, now I'm going to listen to daddy and mommy, and then daddy and mommy will say, see, I told you, right? Listen. Now let's all understand why it's so serious. Hmm. All right? So if, so we have here Israel, right? Israel. Well, of course, in the New Testament, the church, Correct? Now, what is the purpose of Israel and today? The church has always been that we will be a holy people. Holiness, correct? Holiness, to be holy people. Okay? Now, but we have been reminding ourselves again and again, and we emphasize that so the teens must remember. Is it just about being holy? That is the mistake that we make. We work very hard to be a holy Christian all the time. But that is not all. God says we are to be witnesses. Right? Witnesses, in other words, lead people to God. Please understand this clearly. Today, many Christians think it's about being holy. That is why they do not evangelize. They do not study the Word of God in order to be able to explain who God is, what God is, and all the difficult questions and all the, all the resistance towards Christianity. They cannot explain. Neither do they care. They don't take notes in difficult passages. They don't want to study any topic that is irrelevant to their own personal walk and their own personal family because they think that this part is irrelevant. God says, sanctify, your, sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you about your faith, the hope that is in you, right? So these two are always there. We've been studying in First Peter that you may be a, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, for what? Then we read, God says, that they, they will see you and they will glorify God. They will know God, all right? Whether they reject or they accept God, they will glorify Him still. So these two purposes are always linked, all right? So if you still think, well, my family is holy, I'm holy, I don't need to go to church, I don't need to serve, I don't need to be part of church, you, you are only living half a Christian life, useless, and we keep reminding ourselves, seriously, if this is the only reason, holiness, then God does not need to leave us on earth. We are strangers and pilgrims. Why? It's not just to be holy. It is to be witnesses. All right? Now, so that is Israel and the church's purpose, all right, for us today. Now, in order for people to be holy, in order for people to know God, what do they need? Um, Cornelius, what do they need in order for us to, be, to know how to be holy and for people to know God, what do they need? What do we need? We need salvation, okay, yes, very good. So we need to be saved first. Then after we are saved, what is the most important thing that we need that will help us to know how to be holy, help us to know how to tell people about God? God's Word, very good. God's Word, right? So, God wants us to be this, God wants us to fulfill, God wants us to be this, God wants, to, wants us to fulfill this, then He gave us His Word. That is why Israel was chosen. 
Why won't God just say, all right, I, I give my word to any, 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 anyone, anywhere? He chose, he had to choose a nation. He had to choose a people, then form a nation. And the key purpose of this people and this nation is so that he will give them the word. He will give them a word. They will be the repository of the word. And with that word, they know how to live holy lives and shine for God. And with the word, they know how to explain who God is, how they ought to live. So the word was given for that purpose. Today, it's the same for the church. Same for the church. The word is what guides us, our living, our choices. The word is what we use to defend his truth, to defend his character, to explain to people who he is, why he does certain things, why he does not do certain things. The word, the word, the word. All right? Now, then... The next question is this, um, Thomas, what is, important, what is the important link for us, for Israel at that time? If they don't do something, even if they have the word, they cannot be this and they cannot be this. Very good. <laughs> Easy, right? Because there's a topic tonight. Obedience. Obedience is the most important characteristic for Israel. Characteristic, huh? Not the most important thing. The most important thing we've studied is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind. That is the motivation. But even with that motivation, we will still fail if this characteristic is missing, if obedience is missing. You can't say that you love God anyway. But even if you say, I love God, the one thing that you must discipline yourself to have is obedience. And that is why Israel constantly failed. Isn't it so? God says, you draw close, you draw close to me with your lips, but your heart will not obey me. And what does God always call His people? A stubborn people. A stubborn people. Disobedient people. They will not hearken to His voice. So obedience is a very key ingredient in the Christian life in order for us to succeed as strangers and pilgrims on earth to be holy and our holiness is to point people to God and to tell people about God, right? Now you understand. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. You understand why God would give such a law in Israel. God says, number one, it is to get rid of, put away evil among you. Now, if evil, if evil exists in Israel, it means they are not holy. If evil exists in Israel, it means they cannot be witnesses. They cannot tell people to live, to believe in God and thereafter live this way because they have no moral authority to do that at all. Why does God want to put away evil from not only the city but the whole of Israel? Why? Because He needs Israel the entire Israel as a nation to fulfill their witness purpose. As long as there's evil in Israel, they are not holy, they, are not, they cannot be witnesses. That is why Israel was formed. Israel was formed for this one and only purpose, to be a holy nation so that Please remember, it's not just holy nation. Be a holy people like us today. Holy people so that the world will see and know God and so that we can tell people about God without shame because our lives are holy. We won't shrink back because we want those sins, right? 
So it is not simply, well, drunkenness is not good um, and um, uh, gluttony is a sin and therefore he commits sin, let us kill him. It is far more than that. Now at this point then, or maybe let me say some more. So it is always this law, this law to, to increase obedience in the children is so that Israel will not be torn apart by sin. For example, here, the particulars in stubbornness, uh, sorry, gluttony and, and, glut, and, and drunkenness. Gluttony means the person does not care about anything except eating. All right? That's his, that's his love. He will do anything for food. Gluttony, um, um, drunkenness, he will not have clarity of mind to be a witness. He will be useless to God. He will, he will do things that are sinful when he's drunk. So these sins were, for example, given here. Right? For us to realize that if those things are allowed in Israel without being dealt with severely when the person persists in it, Israel will be a society that will be destroyed. That is what it is. And this, this, whole, this whole reason for Israel's existence is gone. Now, Satan knows that. Satan wants that for Israel. Israel as a nation chosen by God must be holy and must be able to stand up to witness for him. Now, then the next thing is this. What is Israel made up of? Tribes, families, individuals, isn't it? That's what Israel is made up of. What is the church made up of? Individuals, families, right? Families, families, right? Now, obedience is by individuals and families. And in families is parents and children. Individuals are also children of someone, all right? You don't exist because you came up, you crawled up from under a rock, right? You, you came from someone, parents. Now, if I ask you today, parents, why do you want your child to obey you? Why? Why do you want your child to obey you? Children, when you don't want to obey daddy and mommy, why do you want to disobey them? Parents want children to obey them simply because they want them to obey them. That's all. Parents want children to obey them because, well, I want you to be someone very successful in this world, make a lot of money so that I can be proud of you and then you can also take care of me when I'm old. Children wants parents, uh, ch parents want children to obey, their, obey them because they did not manage to fulfill a dream in their life and they want to fulfill that dream in their children. I, I wanted to be this, be that, do this, do that. I didn't manage to do this. So I want you to be that. Parents want children to obey them simply because well, it benefits them personally. That's all. But when you begin to understand this, you don't quote this passage and you know, you, you know, you little rascal. In the Old Testament, they stone you to death, you know. Do you realize why they bring the child to the elders of the city? Because it involves Israel. Why do the elders of the city take action? Because it involves Israel's witness. It is because of that. Why do you think God says, I want all Israel to hear, although that sin happened in one city? Because it involves the witness, the light 
of Israel. Now, please understand, parents, when you say, I want you to be obedient to me, it is not simply so that, you know, you, you don't give me heartache. Can you don't give me so much headache and heartache? It must be clear that it is because of a life of holiness, because of a life of being a witness. And I repeat again. Repeat, you don't need to say again, actually. Repeat means again. <laughs> but I want to repeat again to emphasize that. Just making your child obedient to be holy is no use. If your child is disengaged with the people of God, disengaged with church, disengaged, for them disengaged with Israel, for us disengaged with the church, there is no witness. Yes, they have to be a personal witness, but the witness is always a people witness. Now, back to here. Now, children, then I address you. You know, if you want to be a very good sports person, all right, there is a particular sport that you want to be good in. You know then there are certain muscles you need to develop, right? Certain muscles you must strengthen. You know, I was um, um, watching this person who wants to be very good at throwing javelins, right? Javelin? Javelins. Um, and all he focuses on is certain muscles or a certain part of the body and the arm muscle, all right? And of course, certain movement. He just keeps doing that again and again and again and again. In other words, he's trying to strengthen a particular muscle because he has certain objectives. Now, children, you keep saying, I want to be godly seed, all right? Be told, we've been teaching in church at the family seminar. Parents bring up godly seed. Then we remind the children present, right? Parents are trying to make you godly seed. Then children, be godly seed. And in our holiday Bible program, yours, who wants to be godly seed? Everyone, I want to be godly seed. I want to be godly seed, right? Then there is a muscle you must train. Just like these athletes. I want to be godly seed means I want to be a holy child and I want to be a witness for God. I want to study God's word. I want to be able to defend God's word and explain God's word to people and bring people to God when they are in error. All right? I want to be that child. I want to be a godly seed for the church, for the work of God, then you focus on this muscle. Focus on this muscle. You will see obedience totally differently. Satan wants you to think that obedience is a very um, unpleasant, demeaning thing. By the way, we studied, right? Men will be lovers of themselves. Disobedience stems from loving yourself. I don't want to do what you want me to do. I want to do what I want to do. It's, it comes from there. Disobedience, stubbornness, willfulness stems from pride. Men will be proud. It stems from pride. To obey makes you very humble. You did something wrong. Let's say, I told you, don't do that. Stop doing that. To stop means you have to listen, means you are submitting, Right? So God, this, all this builds up. Why must God say now, after I've dealt with that, I need to deal with this thing about obedience to parents? Because without that, without that, without obedience, because it's after this, unthankful, unthankful then holy, unholy, right? Without that, you can't reach holy. Without obedience, you cannot reach holy. But where, does, where is the best place to learn obedience, young ones? at home. Why does God give? He only have 10 commandments He wants to give men. Only 10. That He will summarize everything. 10. He used up one of it. I keep saying, He used up one of it. The fifth commandment. He used up one of it to say, obey, honor your parents. In the New Testament, obey your parents in the Lord. He used up one of that in the 10 commandments. Why? Why? Simple reason. Learning ob obedience is important. Obedience is important for you to fulfill. Let me use markers, all right? Obedience is important for you to fulfill your earthly purpose. All right? The 10th commandment is not simply, parents, don't look at it as 
You see what's so good? You know, God include one so that I can use it to threaten my child to obey me. No obedience is one of the key ingredients for us to succeed as a witness. That is why it's included in the content commandments. And ultimately, those of you who attended BBK, you remember, what is the fifth commandment really about? Um, uh, Benedict. What is the fifth commandment really ultimately about? Is it really about parents? Very good. Ultimately, the fifth commandment is submission to authority. That is what that commandment is. S submission to authority. Disobedience is exactly the opposite of it. Please know that. It's exactly the opposite of submission to authority. The parents in the Bible does not necessarily mean your direct father and mother. All right? The word father is also used as um, people who are in authority. People who have rule over you. Now, the fifth commandment is given to teach submission to authority. So, young children, adults as well, huh? you want to strengthen that muscle, you know where is the best gymnasium to strengthen that muscle? This person I watch, all right? He goes to a special gymnasium. There's a special um, um, rod built and then a, a very heavy weight comes down and then he grabs it, then he throws that weight and then the weight comes back and then he grabs the weight and he throws that weight as far as he can go. There's a special gymnasium designed for that. Why does God say God includes the Ten Commandments? In Ten Commandments, children obey your parents because that is in the home the best place to build up this obedience in you. He said, I want to be a godly seed. I want to go to the gymnasium to train up. What am I training? Which muscle am I training? Obedience. You see, when you are clear about that, you don't look at obedience as something ugly, terrible, and you resist it. I mean, I look at this person. He keeps, do, he keeps doing it. I was thinking, waste of time, you know. Because I have no desire to be throwing a javelin. But he has a purpose. You see, when you young ones, when you have a very clear purpose, I want to be a godly seed. Then I know in order to be a godly seed, obedience is critical. Then I will see obedience as something that I want to do. No matter how painful, no matter, no matter how difficult, no matter how it goes against my love for self and my pride, Daddy and Mommy, I want to obey you because can you please train me? Train me. See, when Israel have obedience, they fly. They were so useful to God. Now, the same for the church today. The place is the home, the family, the family. Now, when um, my neighbor, all right, my neighbor behind my house, he bought a dog, right? Um, recently, uh, maybe about a year back, about a year back, I think. A very cute um, Labrador, right? When a young, very adorable Labrador. Every time I see anyone buys a dog in my neighborhood, I kind of cringe because dogs, when they're young, they'll keep barking, they'll keep crying, um, very, very um, attached to, to the to the, what, the the owners. The owners go to work. Oh, they were just how previously I had a neighbor who had some um, Alaskan huskies. And you know, when they cry, it's like baby crying. And they, they can talk like, whoa, 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 whoa. Every time in early in the morning when the, when the owners go to work, oh, it's just like, um, you can't sleep, right? So I said, oh, no. And this dog was, this, this, this other neighbor, very lively, right? Jumping around. And then I keep seeing them going out. They will tie a leash to the dog. So they were training the dog, right? Training the dog for obedience, obviously, right? You see the dog keep running ahead, pulling, and they were pulling the dog back. It's very painful. You jerk, and then the dog will choke, and then pull it behind, and then stand, and then the dog wants to walk, don't walk, make, make the dog stand next to it, make the dog sit, push the bum, sit, sit. I was thinking, is it, is it going to work, all right? Um, then once when I was doing something outside, then the dog, they were going for the training session. So every walk was a training session. It was not... Not a leisure, right? I see them, it's like, why do someone want to buy a dog and put themselves to that pain? 
right? The training session. So they're passing my house. Then the dog was very excited, but wanted to jump on me and all that. Then they had to pull it back and then train it. And then the father will do that, the, mother, the wife, will, the mother will do that, and the children also take this turn to do that. It's <laughs> like a major family thing. But recently, I, I saw the dog walking. It's a totally different dog, right? It's always one step behind the owner and always looking at the owner and see what the owner wants it to do. Always looking. The owner stops, it will stop. The owner looks at it, it will sit down, all right? It was, I mean, unrecognizable, all right? It's the same dog, but totally different behavior. And recently, I saw they train it further. They hold the leash. With the leash, maybe away. So the doctor walk the dog, but don't hold the leash. Just the leash dragging on the floor, all right? So drag, she stopped. It will stop as well. It's no longer the leash anymore. It's built into the dog to obey. It was good for the dog because the dog can run. If it's uncontrolled, run onto the road, can be killed by a car. Run. I have many dogs that ran away. You know, the, the harder you chase, the faster it runs. And then you get lost for days, can't find it, come back all dirty and hungry. Some don't come back. Don't know what happened to them. Probably knocked down by a car. For the good of the dog. But what I'm trying to say is this, children. You say, maybe I ask, all right, who wants to be, who do not want to be a godly seed? Okay, good. <laughs> no one put up their hand, right? Who does not, wait, hang on. Who doesn't want to be a godly seed? Who wants to be a godly seed? You should put up your hand, right? Then, now there is one verse in the Bible. Now, let me ask you. Maybe I ask, uh, Julius, uh, no, Julius, maybe you're too young for that. Um, Matthew, Matthew, do you like to play with witchcraft? No. Gracia, do you find witchcraft very nice or very evil and you want to avoid it? Evil, right? Evil. Now, Turn, let's all turn to 1 Samuel and then we close. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Reading. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as a iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Now, children, adults alike, if you are rebellious, means you are, you are um, disobedient, willfully against authority, God says you might as well play with witchcraft because it is the same kind of wickedness. We do not touch witchcraft, but we take rebellion, stubbornness, disobedience so lightly. There's a stubbornness as the iniquity of idol of um, as iniquity and idolatry. Disobedience is stubbornness. We say we don't have idolatry, but God says it's the same sin, same evil. Why is it so? Because disobedience, stubbornness, destroyed. Israel. That is why you may as well go and worship idol, you may as well go and play with witchcraft because I will destroy you. That is what disobedience is. I will destroy you. Just like I will destroy you for witchcraft and idolatry. Because Israel just keep thinking they will only be destroyed for idolatry and witchcraft. But they were a very stubborn and rebellious people. They don't see that it is so wicked. Now, young ones, if you say, I want to be a godly seed, I don't want witchcraft, I don't want idolatry, then say, I must train myself to be obedient. Starts in the home. That's the best place. You will have many instructions at home. Now, this dog that I saw taught me a lot of lessons, right? Even without the leash. Children, that is what you say. I want to be a child that it comes to a point that without the leash, 
without mommy and daddy there, without mommy and daddy telling me, without mommy and daddy pulling me back. What they have taught me, what they have told me. Daddy and mommy is not at home, but they told me to wash the dishes. I will still do it. They told me not to wash this and that. I will not do it. It's trained. Trained. You want to be godly seed? Train yourself in that. Be excited about that. Even the smallest thing. Allow me to give one last illustration. You know, one of the things in the military when I was serving my national service is this. When we train the recruits, there's one thing that is clear in our minds. There's only one key thing in the first three months. The training is to break their will. It's to break their will. The training is to humble them. Humble them to the point where you, you shout any command, they will do it. They won't question, they won't resist, they won't be stubborn. That is the only objective in the first three months. Of course, all the other things they have to pass. But that is the key thing we have to train because the moment in, in, when we are in war, there is no time to explain. There is no time to persuade. There is no time. When a command is given, they have to react because if they don't, they might get killed. Worst of all, they can get the whole platoon killed. So it's to train their children. What I'm trying to say is this. Training obedience sometimes means but daddy and mommy, this is nothing to do with God's word, right? Why must I brush my teeth every time I finish eating? Can't I just brush it like everyone else? Twice a day, morning and night. Now, children, whenever you feel like that, just remind yourself, I am training my muscle of obedience. Whatever they say, I will do. I'm just training myself to obey. They say brush, I'll brush. Training obedience. Why do you want to do that? Now you see everything in a different light. I'm training that muscle that one day, one day, one day when God says, I want you to be in the full-time ministry. You may be doing a job that you love. You may be doing something that you love. You may be not willing to be in the full-time ministry. But you have already trained yourself. God, when you call, I will stop whatever I'm doing. Because when I was young, I trained myself. I'm playing the computer game. The moment daddy mommy says, put it down and come for dinner. I put it down and come for dinner. You are training that kind of obedience. God needed the children at home to be trained like that. Because one day God will say, you do this, you do that, you fight this battle. Any commandments given, I will obey God because you're being trained from young to not question as long as it is God. I will do it even if I don't like it. Whatever I'm doing at that time, I will be willing to drop it and I will do it. That is why God put this commandment in the Bible. That is why it's so serious because it is the critical link between Israel's success or failure. And it's a critical link between the church's failure or success in this age. So young ones, now I hope you see all this differently. Parents, now you ask your child to obey you for a very different reason. God willing, in the weeks to come, we will study some more. But tonight, I just want to establish the reason why obedience is so critical and so high up in the list. Train ourselves for that, adults as well. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, O Lord, how can we be holy? How can we be witnesses? If as children and as adults, we don't train ourselves to be obedient. And Father, we pray that you build obedient children in this church, obedient adults in this church, that through this very difficult place of obedience in the home where it is most difficult, Lord, we will become children that will obey your word at the drop of a hat. We ask and pray that you be with us and meet with us in the place of prayer, for Lord, we are helpless as a church without you hearing our prayers. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.